I made a video recently about the housing crisis happening in Australia at the moment. And in that video, I asked whether you would be interested to hear the story of our rental experience here in Australia. And a lot of you said yes. So this is that video, okay? I want you to buckle yourself in because this is going to be quite the story. By the way, if this is the first time you're stopping by here, my name is Chioma. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy your time with me today. Take a moment to hit the like button on this video. Subscribe if you want to join the family and let's get started. <laughs> I am laughing, okay, even though whenever I remember that experience, it always comes with a mixture of emotions. But let me just get into the story. Our family relocated to Australia in 2015. We didn't all come in at once. My husband came in first and then we joined him a few months down the track. In the first place, when he first arrived here, he was in shared accommodation. But because we were going to be joining him he started looking for a bigger place and it was very difficult for him. He kept applying for houses. He kept getting rejected. It wasn't until a friend, a friend he had made after he came into Australia, who happens to be an Australian citizen. It wasn't until this friend stepped in and decided to help that my husband was eventually approved for a two bedroom unit. And the approval came just a couple of days before we arrived in Australia. So he didn't even have the time to furnish the apartment by the time we arrived. You know, this place was very basic, nothing fantastic about it. Just two bedrooms, toilet and bathroom, kitchen and a laundry. And that was it. It was in a very old building. We lived in Parramatta at that time. And Parramatta happens to be one of the oldest suburbs in all of Australia. Okay, not just in Sydney. For those of you who live in Sydney, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the flavor of Parramatta is different. It's a vibrant, beautiful city. Okay, but you see a lot of old apartments there. Anyways, it wasn't too long after we moved in that we began to notice things. First of all, we realized that there was a horrible mold problem in that apartment. The bathroom was the worst of them all. And we discovered that the landlord had painted over the mold just before we came into that apartment. But it wasn't too long after we moved in, started using the bathroom, that the mold started showing through the paint again and it started to resurface. So throughout the time that we lived in that apartment, it was me constantly scrubbing the walls, spraying, leaving windows open, trying to contain the situation, but it just wasn't working. As if that was not enough, we had a lot of plumbing issues in that apartment. I remember that we had this incident where a plumber came out to fix yet another broken tap. And he just said to us, listen, I am very familiar with this building. I've been called out so many times to fix plumbing issues in this building, not just in our units, but the entire building. And he had recommended to the landlord, who, by the way, owned the entire building, he had recommended several times to the landlord that the entire plumbing system needed to be upgraded, but no one was listening to him. So while he was fixing the tap in our unit, he told me point blank that he would not be surprised if he was called out again in a few weeks because what he was doing was just a temporary fix and it wasn't going to hold up for too long. And true to his words, it became a constant nightmare of always reporting maintenance issues relating to the plumbing, right? There was even a winter that we went almost the entire winter without hot water because the hot water tap in the kitchen broke and we did not have hot water because the tap was flowing freely at full pressure, no control. Water was not staying long enough in the water heater to be heated before we could use it from the tap. And so we had to boil water on the stove almost the entire winter. As if all of this were not enough, there was also a significant pest infestation going on in that apartment. Now, because we moved in in the colder months, we moved in there in August, which is still reasonably cold here. So what I have observed in Australia is that in the cooler months, pest activity is reduced. But as soon as the weather starts to warm up again, you begin to see more insects around. And so if you find yourself dealing with an infestation of any kind, then during winter, it's a bit more manageable than in summer. So as the weather began to warm up, we began to notice things. And I should have known when we first moved into that apartment, I remember that I saw a lot of signs to suggest that there was an insect infestation. There were lots of cockroaches droppings in places like the cabinet under the laundry. There were 
insect droppings there in some hidden corners in the kitchen. And that apartment was not properly cleaned before we even moved in. So it was easy to detect all those signs. But because, like I said, it was the colder months, we didn't really see a lot of insect activity until things began to warm up. We had a horrible experience of German cockroach infestation. I tried all the products I could find from the supermarket, all the sprays I could buy, and instead, it was making the problem worse because it was spreading the um, cockroaches away from the area of the spray and into other areas in the apartment. It was just plain horrible. <laughs> Anyways, I got rid of it by ordering this product online. It came all the way from the US, I believe. I can't remember the name of it right now. So I use that product. It's not a spray. It's like a paste which you use around the areas of the infestation. So I use that product and it got rid of the problem. Throughout our stay there, it was one issue after the other. Even the balcony was too narrow, so the kids did not really have any outdoor space to play in, apart from when I would take them to the local park. But there in the apartment, there was very little room for them to run around and just be kids. The balcony was so narrow that once we placed the clothes hanger on there, it took up all the space and you couldn't do anything else on that balcony. And let me just say that these problems got worse and worse the longer we stayed in that place. And it wasn't just us. Every other tenant within that apartment block had the same issues. And by the time we left that place three years down the track, yes, and I will come back to talk about why we even stayed there that long. By the time we eventually vacated that place three years down the track, we realized that we had been the longest living tenants in that place within that period. We would see people come in and move out. Within two months, within six months, three months, they would come in, they would move out. And when we had the chance to talk to one of them who had moved in like four months or six months prior, they expressed the same concerns about the mold, about the constant plumbing issues. But unfortunately, we had a landlord from hell and the real estate agents were the absolute worst. So how come we stayed in that place for that long? It wasn't for lack of trying that we ended up living there for three years. After we started noticing all those problems, we resolved to find another place one year in. And we gave ourselves one year because we wanted to have a rental history. We wanted to have pay slips and all those other documents that are usually um, required for your rental application. So by the following year in February, we, we started attending house inspections. And do you know, we did this consistently every single weekend for three whole months and we were unsuccessful. Every application we threw in and I lost count of how many applications came back with the rejection. It was heartbreaking. At some point, we had to call off the search because it was having such a toll on us mentally, physically, emotionally. It was very demoralizing. And so we continued living in the apartment from hell. We attempted to move again some months down the track. We had the same experience with application rejections. It got to the point where I believe the plumbing system gave way entirely and water was beginning to come through the walls. The mold problem extended into all the bedrooms, into the living area, and then water was leaking through the walls and forming a pool in our daughter's bedroom. We had to buy rubber mats. We bought one at first and the pool grew bigger. We bought a second one and a third one just to still be able to access that room. The kids were falling sick. My daughter got diagnosed with asthma. My hay fever allergy was triggered all the time. We knew that it was now a matter of life and death. I know that sounds very dramatic, but we knew we needed to live. We needed to do everything we could to live. And so I started thinking, what really could we do differently? And this is where I would encourage you to go watch the other video I made regarding the housing crisis, because in that video, I focused a lot more on providing suggestions around things that people who are having any difficulty navigating the housing um, market right now can use in their own plans, right? So these are some of the things that I did myself to get us out of that <laughs> apartment from hell. What I did was I started 
calling up real estate agents. So instead of just showing up to inspections, registering and showing up to house inspections, I decided to build a rapport with real estate agents beforehand. So I would give them a call, introduce ourselves, you know, talk to them about our family and what our needs were housing wise. I would email, I would visit them in their offices. I just wanted these people to humanize us. I, I didn't want us to just be names on paper. I wanted people to remember us. Even before a real estate agent would make a listing, I had already given them a call and said, see, if anything is coming up on the market that fits within wish list that we have given you, like our budget, the location we want to be in, how many bedrooms and all of that, if anything is coming up in the market, please let us know. So I got onto a lot of email lists. And as soon as something was listed on the market that fits into our search parameters, I would give the real estate agent another call, just to remind them that I was still looking. And sometimes I would even request a private inspection. Some real estate agents would oblige and they would grant me a, a private inspection. We were able to eventually get approved for another place. As a matter of fact, we only spent two weeks looking before we were approved for three houses. So we had a different kind of problem. It felt as if we won the lottery when we saw three approvals for properties. Anyways, we eventually moved out of that place. And you would think that our problems would end there, like our problems in this apartment from hell <laughs> would end after we got approved for another property. No, it didn't end there. The landlord decided he wasn't going to give us back our bond. We had to drag him to the tribunal, make a case with the tribunal before he released our bond to us. And then sometime in 2020, we were also thinking about moving again for other reasons. And 2020 was a big year, as you all know, the year of the pandemic, the year of COVID-19. Things were happening all around the world, right? People were losing jobs, businesses were shutting down, borders, international borders were closing, people were stranded. The current housing crisis is Australia still trying to recover from the impact of the pandemic. But I believe that that was the genesis of today's problem. We were thinking about moving houses, but it's not like we were in a desperate situation like previously. So I would just go out casually, even during the week, and just inspect houses around my area. And what I saw was mind boggling. I thought I had seen the worst on all those occasions when we were house hunting for several months. There were times that we would head out to house inspections and find a massive crowd of people. I'm talking about lines so long that they were getting out onto the street and even into the side streets, very long lines. There were lots of times that we would show up to a house inspection and just turn around, head back into the car due to the crowd we met at this location. So I thought I had seen it all. But when 2020 came around, my goodness, I was seeing crowds double triple the size of anything I had ever experienced before. And that was also the first time that I saw rental bidding up front. I knew that rental bidding was going on. It's not an encouraged practice, but we all know it happens. Now, rental bidding is where people are offering to pay higher than the advertised price of a rental. Usually it happens in the background, okay? But this time around, it was happening in full glare of everyone, in full view of everyone. You would attend a housing inspection and find a cluster of people around the real estate agent, and they were all trying to outbid each other. <laughs> it was funny to watch. Some would offer to pay $50 more, some $100 more, $150 more. It was crazy. I wasn't about to do any of that. So I started thinking again, okay, okay, it's looking like I might have to go back into my toolbox and see what arsenal I can pull out this time around because there is no way I am going to join a thousand people to bid for a rental. Because I had built a relationship with some of these real estate agents in the past, from our past experiences, right? I pulled up my list of all the real estate agents that had given me a positive response in the past and I started calling them one after the other. Eventually, the same real estate agent that we were renting through came through for us because I just reminded them. I said, listen, we've been good tenants to you. You have a very good record of our tenancy. We've always paid our rent on time. You've never had any problems with how we have looked after a property, right? So now we need your help. We need to move again. This is what we're looking for. This is our budget. Yeah, and they came through for us. So 
They even called us up for a private inspection and that was how we got into our next rental. So I am saying all of this because it appears that the situation is even a lot worse than what we experienced back then. But I would encourage you to be very careful at this moment. If you are at the point in your planning where you just can't make an about turn, maybe because you've already applied for things and you've been approved, please watch the other video about those strategies that I used. Okay. And I am hoping that one or two of those tips would help you navigate the housing scene when you arrive in Australia. On the other hand, if your plans are still at a very basic stage, I would encourage you to think very carefully about about what's best for you at this point. Would it be better for you to hold on on those plans, wait until things are a bit more stable before you come in? It's not in my place to tell anybody what to do, what not to do, whether to come to Australia or whether not to come to Australia. But I believe when you have the right information, you can make the best decision for yourself. But on that note, people, that was my rental experience. Hope you have enjoyed this video. I'll see you again in my next one. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. Bye-bye.